What's going on guys? CHF here bringing you another episode of Coaching Handheld Football and we have got a good one today guys. I'm going to be giving you everything you need to know about positioning your defense on the lineup scheme and, or screen and I'm going to break down the defensive scheme that I've been using for the past couple of weeks. It was based on my personnel but we'll talk through uh, you know why I did those things and even try to look at some of the results. So in the news today guys the kickoff thing is coming. Again it's just 16 no stamina live events. Make sure to grind it. We have a couple of new Phenoms players today uh, in Rashawn Evans and Marquise Brown if you are going for Phenoms. And then, of course, just more of the advertising for the other stuff. So let's talk about defensive positioning. Where guys line up on the field, what personnel is going to be on the field based on, uh, you know, whether you're coming out in 4-3, 3-4, nickel, dime, etc. And don't go ahead and talk about it. People always ask to see my team. So, you know, here's my offense right now. Uh, but we're mainly going to focus on the defense. So let's go ahead and hop over there. So the first thing I want to talk to you about, guys, is where guys line up. Because a lot of times things are going to be flipped, okay? So what I mean by that is everything you see here, this guy right here, this Jabal Sheard, he actually is going to line up on the right side of the field from the offensive perspective. And William Hayes is going to line up on the left side of the field from the offensive perspective. So what that means is, uh, for in general, most people tend to roll out right. So I would say to put your uh, faster, better defensive end over on this side because he will be coming on the right side of the field. Um, and that's just kind of the way I think for someone who's going to be rushing the passer to come in. Now, the same thing is true with your linebackers. So Lawrence Taylor, in this case, is going to line up on the left side of the field from the offense's perspective, and Zadarius Smith uh, is going to line up on the right side. Now, I want to stress something that's kind of important here because ideally, I would prefer to have my better linebacker line up on the right side of the field, which would mean I would put them in that Zadarius Smith, but you'll see that I have my better linebacker in um, on the other side. And the reason for that is all about the nickel defense. Because when you come out in the nickel defense, you're going to drop a linebacker uh, to get an extra defensive back, in this case, Ty Law. Um, and what's going to happen is it's going to put the two linebackers on the field are going to be your middle linebacker right here. And then it's going to be the linebacker who's in this spot. So since I'm running a lot of nickel in this scheme, I want my better linebacker on the field on those plays. The same thing holds true, guys, with the safeties. The safeties are flipped. So in this case, you'll see I have Harrison Smith here. He would play on the left side of the field. Eddie Jackson would play on the right side of the field. For these safeties in general, uh, you know, I like to see... Um, a better safety on the other side of the field, uh, on the right side of the field. Most people are like looking to throw corner routes and things like that. So for that reason, I am actually going to switch those guys. That is where I want my better safety. So I want my better safety here because I want to protect the right side of the field from the offensive standpoint. Again, the better defensive end I'm going to want here. Uh, and the better linebacker, you have to make that choice. If you're running a lot of 4-3 and you're not running a lot of nickel defense, then it really doesn't matter. If you have a 4-3 scheme, I would say to put your better linebacker over here. But if you're running a lot of nickel, you want to have your better linebacker on the field. So personnel-wise, that's what's going to happen. If you're going with a 3-4, oops, uh, if you're going with a 3-4 defense, which uh, I, I don't have any 3-4 in the scheme I'm about to show you, this guy would come off the field, uh, and this guy would come on the field. If you're going with a 4-3, this guy would be off the field. This guy would be on the field. And anything that has four down linemen is going to use all four of these guys. So that's, you know, nickel. It's dime. So uh, from that standpoint, my defensive line is pretty weak, but my scheme is predominantly going to be a uh, nickel and dime-based scheme that I'm showing you guys today. Reason being, my best linebacker is a middle linebacker. In dime, he's always on the field. Uh, as the only linebacker, he's technically always on the field. Um, but I have better defensive backs. As you can see, I've got two uh, elite safeties, two elite corners, and then decent corners here. I, I want to talk about the nickel spot. If you play a lot of season mode, nickel blitz two is an incredible defensive play for season mode, and what I would recommend in this spot is either a 
um, corner who has uh, decently high hit power or a safety who has decently high hit power. You also want good speed because coming off the edge, he's going to hit the quarterback a lot. He can force some fumbles. So that's the positioning guide, guys. Uh, I want to make sure that you know exactly where to put your guys so that your best guys are on the field. Let's talk about the scheme because as I said, I am currently running, um, and I may have to change it after this, of course, I am currently running a predominantly nickel and dime based scheme, but I want to show you something real quick. We had a match just the other day uh, where we lost to the number five league, but my defense came up big and I want to show you what this scheme did because this is the exact scheme that I was using here. And as you can see, I put up 22 points, but let's take a look at the defense, okay? Uh, and just so you know, this guy we're going up, uh, who was going up against me is, is Cooper. He, uh, yeah, he's an 82 offense, 84 defense, so significantly higher than what I have. But let's take a look at what happened. So he came out, he's using West Coast with Blast, halfback uh, toss strong, halfback dive. But you'll see that this scheme, you know, second and one, he's not getting huge chunks of yards here. So he came out, he did score a touchdown with a two-point conversion on the first one. Again, they're in the number five league in the world. You would expect them to be pretty good. But what I want you to notice is this scheme, he's not getting any big play runs despite having an overall advantage on me. And then when it came down to it here, you know, we're forcing a fourth down. He's getting some yards. And ultimately, he drops that second drive unable to convert from the five yard line, um, you know, and those are plays that are pretty hard to shut down. Tight end out is a great play. I, I talked about it uh, in my third down series and it's a great play. And then looking at this final drive again, he's getting decent yards. He does end up kind of recycling toss strong early, a 24 yard, but we shut down the halfback wham two point conversion and ultimately held him to 14, which in a top match, if you can hold somebody to 14, that's a big deal. So that's kind of just a proof of concept. I, I figured I could show you that I'm getting stops against like, you know, much lower ranked leagues, but that's not as useful in my opinion as showing you get getting stops against a top league. So let's break down the strategy itself, okay? And we will we'll come back to the two-point conversion at the end, okay? So I want to show you on first down, you will see here I am using primarily nickel and dime. In fact, here I have four dime plays and one nickel play. The nickel play is quarter blitz, blitz three, and then I have DB blitz, DE contain, Mike dime blitz, and dime cover four on first down. I want to have a good combination of plays that can stuff the run, as well as not being overly exploited. Like I've seen some people try to come out and like punt block or something, just assuming that they're going to throw every time or that they're going to run every time on first. And of course you get beat there. So plays like DB blitz, Mike Dime Blitz are going to be useful in stopping an early run. And then things like Corner Blitz 3, uh, again, is going to bring some pressure. And then you have some uh, Contain and Cover 4. Second and Short, again, you are going to see, in fact, this one is purely Dime. When I designed this scheme, my Nickelback, um, or my, my linebackers were not as good. So I was primarily focusing on Dime. Uh, but these are going to be this, the setup I use on second and short. Again, a lot of people are going to run on uh, on second and short. So you'll see that I've got quite a few uh, blitzes here. I've got Mike Dime Blitz, Dime Blitz 2, and uh, Strong Safety Overload 3, as well as 3 Double Sky. So that is a lot of blitzing there uh, with one cover, one uh, Robert Press. The thing is, on second and short, a lot of people are going to run. I didn't want to overcommit with, again, something like punt block or anything like that. So I wanted to maintain some decent coverage. Uh, but ultimately, focus on what is most likely on second and short. Second and medium, kind of have to do a combination of things there. So you'll see that we actually have one little bit that I did stray here. Four buzz flats on second and medium is a 4-3. So I did uh, uh, change it up from there. Same with cover one, Robert Mann out of 3-4 and Will Sam 3. This second and medium is where I didn't put a ton of dime. I do have some quarter in cover three contain and three double sky on second and medium. But again, the process here is I want decent options for both coverage as well as the run. Second and long is another situation where uh, I think the most likely thing is probably going to be passing. So I've got things like three double buzz, saw three bluff, bluff, cover four, but sometimes people will in fact run. So having something like Mike Dime Blitz and one DB Blitz are going to just keep them honest because they may encounter something uh, on the first second and long that they encounter uh, where they may see coverage. So they may come out in a run and then catch something like that. 
Third and short, again, I'm going back to uh, primarily diamond nickel. In fact, this one is going to be all diamond nickel. I've got nickel blitz two, corner blitz three, and DB blitz as far as blitzes go, and then DE contain and cover one robber press, which are both cover one man uh, coverage here. Man coverage, if you're going to come out, man is definitely better against the run than zone, uh, but it's pretty easy to pass against man coverage, so I like to have a good mix of the two if I'm going to use it. Third and medium, again, kind of in a situation where I'm going to combine uh, both coverage as well as run blitzing here. So I've got saw three bluff, which is at a quarter. I like that play because it looks like a blitz. Everybody kind of runs down pre-snap, but then everybody just drops back into coverage. So if they go for a quick throw or something like that, I can't tell you how many interceptions that play has got me. Dime blitz two, corner blitz three, DB blitz are three blitzes here. Again, this is a pretty blitz heavy scheme. And then cover four to show the coverage. For third and long, I've got in here, uh, again, mostly dime. In fact, this one, I believe, is all dime on third and long. Three double buzz, three double sky, DB blitz, DE contain, and cover four. So it is mostly coverage, but I do want to have one blitz in there just in case, uh, you know, to keep them honest. Again, I like to have a bunch of options, and I like it to change so that they can't get used to what's coming at any given time. Moving on, fourth and short. Uh, again, this is a fourth and short situation, so I've got... Very similar to other ones, I've got a couple of blitzes, DB Blitz, Dime Blitz uh, 2, and Mike Dime Blitz, uh, as well as Cover 1, Robert Press, man coverage there, but I do have a little bit of co uh, Cover 4 because sometimes people will overcommit, and Cover 4 uh, can actually do a good job of stopping some early drag routes and things like that. For fourth and long, this is kind of a spot, guys, where coverage is going to reign king, so it is basically all diamond quarter here, and I've got Cover 6, Saw 3 Bluff, cover four out there. I do have one cover one robber press in there. Uh, it's one of the better man plays. And then of course I have one DB blitz, which is just a five man blitz where you've got both your nickel and your dime back blitzing on there. Uh, so you'll notice that most of my blitzes are coming out of the nickel or dime. So that's why I want fast, hard hitting uh, either safeties or corners if you have them um, in those posi particular positions. Let's talk about two-point conversions because there's a lot of different thoughts here. I've seen a lot of people come out in punt block. And if your opponent runs the ball, whether it's halfback base, halfback zone, halfback wham, really any of the two-point run plays, punt block will absolutely shut them down. However, the problem is basically any pass is a guaranteed two-point conversion. So I do not like to do that. I personally choose to use as my base two-point setup, at least under this scheme, Mike Dime Blitz and Cover 4 Dime. Uh, that way I've got a good, decent combination of coverage as well as pressure. Uh, if Mike Dime Blitz hits against something like halfback base, it's going to stop it. Granted, if Cover 4 shows up and they go with an inside run, they'll probably get it. But if they come out there in something like double drags, uh, wide receiver drags, any of the, the, the kind of drag routes, Cover 4 does a, uh, out of dime does a great job of shutting down those uh, drag routes. So guys, that has been my scheme. Again, I change my scheme regularly and in a top match, if I happen to catch the time somebody is driving on me, for example, uh, like, like you saw that I stopped the second two-point conversion against Bush League, uh, the reason being is I had my base in here and then I saw from his first conversion that he was using halfback wham as his two-point conversion play. So I pulled both of these out and I threw in punt block because I knew what he was using. I just think that that's really risky because if they come out with a pass, they're going to hit you really easily and get it uh, that way. I'd rather kind of defend both the run and the pass or at least have a chance of doing it. And then if I see they're running, try and catch him live. Uh, but anyways, that has been my primarily nick, uh, primarily dime, a little bit of nickel, a little bit of other coverage in there. Uh, but again, it got stops against a top league. It's very hard to get big runs off of against this particular scheme. So, you know, while they can score, it's not overly blitz heavy. Um, they're going to have to work for it and it's going to slow them down. And it, you know, the more plays they take, the more snaps that are going on, the more opportunities for them to either make an error or for something like a fumble or a random number generator based pick to happen. But that has been my scheme. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Of course, I change my scheme regularly. So, uh, you know, next time I have a good scheme that's getting some good stops and top matches, I will bring that to you guys as well. And again, change your scheme based on your personnel. I built this scheme primarily because of how my team was set up. If you have an amazing four linebackers 
and a crappy defensive line, you'll probably want to run a lot of 3-4. So build it around your personnel. Know where your personnel is going to be on the field so that you have the right guys on the field at the right time. But I'm going to shut down the video, guys. Let me know in the comments down below if this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. Uh, if your league wants to kind of understand this stuff too, feel free to share it with them. Again, you guys sharing my content is really the best way to help me grow. So thank you from the bottom of my heart for that. I love you guys. I will see you tomorrow. CHF out.